Even though everyone develops at slightly different paces, almost everyone hits the same general developmental milestones and learns the same sets of skills at about the same time, more or less. These are things like language and communication, socializing, cognitive skills like problem solving, and physical milestones like walking, crawling, and fine motor skills, all of which progress as the brain develops. If one of these doesn't develop as scheduled, depending on the severity, it may be described as a type of neurodevelopmental disorder, neuro referring to the brain. Especially when certain skills related to socializing and communicating don't proceed as normally, it can result in isolation, which is where the name autism originated, since auto means self. So autism refers to a condition where somebody might be removed from social interaction and communication, leaving them alone or isolated. Before 2013, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, the 4th edition, or the DSM-4, described autism as one of several pervasive developmental disorders, which also includes Asperger's Syndrome, Childhood Disintegrative Disorder, and those not otherwise specified, or PDD and OS. Asperger's syndrome was used for children that appeared to have characteristics of autism, like difficulties with social interactions or nonverbal communication, but don't generally have significant delays in language or cognitive development, and therefore Asperger's syndrome was sometimes referred to as a high-functioning form of autism. Childhood disintegrative disorder was used to describe late onset of developmental delays, so these children develop normally for their age, but then they seem to lose the acquired social and communication skills sometime between age 2 and 10. Pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, is essentially a catch-all category in which patients meet some, but not all, features of autism, Asperger's syndrome, or childhood disintegrative disorder. Researchers found, however, that separate diagnoses of these pervasive developmental disorders weren't consistent across different clinics, since they tend to have very similar signs and symptoms. As of 2013, the DSM-5, a new revised edition, removed these terms and replaced them with Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, which encompasses all of the previous pervasive developmental disorders, but uses a scale, or a spectrum, that differentiates based on the severity of two major areas, social communication and interaction deficits, and restrictive or repetitive behavior, interests, and activities. For the social and communication area, there are four subcategories that clinicians look for deficits. The first is social reciprocity, which refers to how children respond or reciprocate in social interactions, so like how the behavior of one person influences the other, and vice versa. An example impairment in this area might be referring to being alone and not taking a role in social games. A second area of potential deficit is joint attention, which is the state of wanting to share an interest with someone else. So it's like, hey, check out this awesome thing I found. So an example impairment in this area might be a child not sharing their interests or amusement in an object with their parent. Next, there's nonverbal communication, which refers to difficulties either using nonverbal communication themselves or interpreting nonverbal cues from someone else. So maybe the child won't put their arms out when they want to be picked up. Or maybe they won't be able to tell when a parent's upset, even if the parent's frowning and crossing their arms. The last subcategory of communication deficits is in social relationships. So children have trouble developing and maintaining relationships. So maybe the child has a hard time making friends. Or they're able to make friends, but their behavior tends to drive the friends away. The other major area is called restrictive and repetitive behaviors, and this category is pretty broad and can include a whole bunch of behaviors, some being more well known or characterized than others, like lining up toys in a ritualistic sort of way, or flapping one's hands, or imitating words or phrases. The child might be fixed on certain routines, like taking the same route every day to school, or they might have restricted patterns of interest, like having a very specific and in-depth knowledge of the Titanic or vacuum cleaners. Children with autism spectrum disorder might exhibit one or more of these deficits and vary in how severe the deficit is. With that in mind, it's important to remember that each child with autism spectrum disorder is going to have a different spectrum of symptoms and deficits. Typically, clinicians will try to observe these behaviors in the child, looking for these possible deficits. 
Since these behaviors are often more well known by the child's caretakers than they are by the clinicians, like their parents or their teachers, a meaningful diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder relies heavily on listening to what others are observing at home or in school. They might be given severity scores in each area, which can help determine how much support the child's going to need. For example, a severity level 1 would indicate the child needs some support. For social communication, they might speak in full sentences and engage in communication, but normal back-and-forth conversation with others just doesn't seem to work. For repetitive and restrictive behaviors, they might have difficulty switching between activities. On the other side of the spectrum, a level 3 severity means the child needs very substantial support, and on the social communication side, they might display very few words of intelligible speech and rarely initiate an interaction with others. For repetitive behaviors, they might be extremely resistant to change, and their behaviors seriously interfere with their daily life. It's thought that using this scale of symptoms, as opposed to differentiating between pervasive developmental disorders, will help give a more accurate and medically useful way to diagnose individuals. For example, those with what was previously described as Asperger's syndrome would likely fall closer to severity level 1 than severity level 3. Generally speaking, autism spectrum disorder is thought to have a genetic cause, which ultimately affects brain development, specifically areas that affect social and communication behaviors. Which genes or combination of genes that are affected in autism spectrum disorder, though, is still very much a mystery. In addition, there are a bunch of environmental triggers that have to be explored, but at the moment there are no clear risk factors that have been identified. With that said, there is also no cure for autism spectrum disorder, and treatment or management has to be specifically and carefully tailored to each child. And this includes things like specialized education programs and behavior therapy that all seek to maximize quality of life and functional independence.